it seems like a new electric vehicle goes on sale every week these days, and a lot of them are really exciting. You know, the Mustang Mach-E, the GMC Hummer EV, the Ford F-150 Lightning. But people have got questions. It's, it's a different kind of vehicle. The good news is that in a lot of ways, they're really easy to use, and they can save you money once you get past the fact that you know, they're, they're expensive to buy. They're complicated in some ways, though, and one of the most different ways from driving a, a conventional car is charging the battery. Today, we're going to give you the ABCs of charging an electric vehicle. We've got two popular and affordable new EVs to demonstrate. The Ford Mustang Mach-E and the Hyundai Ioniq 5. Both of them are easy to charge and will show you the different kinds of charging, which is the key. Different speeds, different voltages. It's increasingly common for public parking structures to have 240 volt chargers. That's the same kind of voltage that most people use when they're charging overnight at home. It's not the fastest, but it'll get you 20 miles of range in an hour. It's a good way to top up your battery. People are reluctant to get electric vehicles because they think there are no chargers anywhere. That's wrong. There are more chargers than you expect probably, but they're modest little suckers. This one, for instance, in downtown Detroit's Beacon Park is right off of Grand River Avenue, a major boulevard, but you might never know it's there. In fact, to help people finding chargers, there are smartphone apps that will give you routing, it'll tell you whether chargers are working, how fast the charger is, very, very useful. Most automakers have them, and the companies that run the charging stations have them as well. It says plug in first, so that's what I'm going to do. I've got my Electrify America app open here. It's been recognized and payment is authorized. The length of time it takes to charge, fully charge the average EV, it depends on two major factors. Number one, the vehicle, and number two, the charger. I think I would start and explain that for the average customer out there driving a passenger vehicle like you might see right here, in most occasions they are not going to need to actually fully charge that vehicle. It might be similar to actually your cell phone charge at home. How often do you actually run that down to zero? That being said, a high voltage charger such as the one that you see right here, depending on the, the capacity of the charger, it could be 30 minutes up to 60 minutes. Over the coming years, we will see chargers that will be able to fully charge a vehicle over a 15 minute time horizon. The charger that this customer might have in their garage at home would be able to charge in three to eight hours uh, on a total. The last thing I would add in here on this, this point is that most customers will find over a one year period, they may only need to use a DC fast charger on perhaps several occasions, say for a trip up north to the Upper Peninsula or down to Florida. Electric vehicle technology has come an infinite distance in the last 10 years, but the state of American charging infrastructure has not. Infrastructure, the ability to charge, particularly when you're going on long drives between cities from one state to another, that's the biggest challenge today for people who own an EV. You can work around it, but you need to plan, you need to know where the charging stations are, and at the moment you'll need to allot a little bit more time, although that's changing as higher powered charging stations become more common. I'm Mark Phelan, Detroit Free Press Auto Critic.